Hey everybody, it's Django, and in this video, I'm going to be going over movement in MechWare Online. We're going to be going over uh, basic uh, basic mechanics, which are pretty much the components, component mechanics, uh, and then we're going to go over some more advanced mechanics that will kind of be combinations of basic mechanics. Uh, in the end, the ultimate goal of learning movement in Mech Warrior is to make yourself harder to hit, make your gameplay more fluid. Um, you want to have fun. It's, it's really fun to move your mech properly. Um, and the overarching goal is to combine the, the basic mechanics that you'll learn into more advanced mechanics and sort of develop your own movement. So we're going to get started here. And uh, in, in this video, I'm going to have in the YouTube video, there's going to be different like sections. I'm going to do that. Uh, so if you want to like skim over or you think you're good on one mechanic, you can kind of skip to the next and see what's up. It's all up to you. You can work at your own pace. Uh, more veteran players, you can kind of skip stuff if you already know. But this is going to be a guide for all players. So I'm going to go over the most basic stuff as well. Uh, so let's get started. Firstly, I recommend not having arm lock activated. I prefer uh, loose arms. Uh, they make your mech move better. Uh, it becomes more fluid when you have arm lock it kind of gets a little bit like iffy for me personally and I think Having your arms unlocked will help you. I have the directional arrow. You usually don't play with it But I thought it might be good if you wanted to see how we move All right enough with the introductions Let's get started and the first thing we're going to talk about is twisting All right, so there's four types of twisting in mechware first type of twisting is regular twisting So you're gonna be twisting your torso not your legs, just your torso with your mouse. This is regular twisting. And you're gonna do this with your, your basic, just your most basic kinds of movements. You just do it all the time. Second type of twisting is parallel twisting, okay? And this is when you turn your legs in one direction and you're gonna turn your torso with your legs in the same direction, okay? So it's gonna be your fastest twist, pretty much. This is the fastest twist you can do. And this is your primary damage spreading uh, mechanic. This is this is when you want to spread damage you parallel twist, okay? I know a lot of new players um, They might spectate someone who's parallel twisting and they wonder why can't they uh, twist that fast? It's probably because you're not twisting your legs and your torso at the same time uh, And in the same direction, okay, that's parallel twisting Third type of twisting is counter twisting and it's just the opposite of parallel twisting It's just you're gonna tw you're gonna turn your legs in one way and turn your torso the other way like this and I would get used to parallel twisting. You're going to be using it in combination with other basic mechanics to perform more advanced mechanics. Like this. Yes. Little S-shaped turns. But you don't want to parallel twist and do it. Because you're going to be really confused when you start doing um, more advanced mechanics. So counter twisting. Learn counter twisting. Have it down. Do it all the time. Have it be ingrained. Okay. It's second nature to a lot of players already. And you want it to be second nature for you as well. Last type of twisting is is free looking. Um, I don't know if which key it's binded to, but it's somewhere in your settings. I have mine binded to uh, by side mouse button. And free looking essentially turns the cockpit or you know, the pilot inside the cockpit, and you turn your head, you can look around. But it also turn it also moves just the arms. If you see the little reticle, it turns just the arms. It does not turn anything else. So. A lot of people, uh, it's called dabbing. That's the, the official term that we've come up with as a community is dabbing like this. So you're moving your arms in one direction while twisting the other way. Um, and this makes it so you can twist away from your opponent and kind of spread damage. Um, and then you can fire. Let's say if I have peeps in my arm, it's, it's good for, for when you have uh, velocity weapons, you can dab shot and you can kind of protect one side of your body. That's dabbing. Um, this takes a little bit more getting used to and I think it's one of the harder mechanics and it's also not one that's really needed You can come in come in clutch here and there and it's kind of just fancy uh, It's not necessary, but I thought I'd mention it uh, And uh, I want to mention a version of parallel twisting. So this is a parallel twist as stated earlier But depending on your mech hitbox, it might be good to wiggle Actually, it's good to wiggle uh, a lot of the time as well And this is just you parallel twisting, but just not doing a full parallel twist like 90 degrees to expose just an arm if you have if your mech has like a nose for example that can be hit from all directions doing a twist like this isn't really going to help you because they can still hit you from the side you can't really protect like your center torso for example so you you wiggle in front of your opponent in instead and you spread damage that way 
That is a version of parallel twisting. Okay, so that is twisting. Next mechanic we're going to go over is deceleration control. Okay, so before we get into that, we're gonna I'm going to present to you the fact that when you move in Mech Warrior, your turn rate increases when you decrease your speed. Okay, so for example, uh, when I'm staying still, I turn the fastest. And then when I'm going at max speed, I turn the slowest. Now, the reason decel is important is because you can turn faster while you're decelling because you're going to be at a lower speed. And this is going to be important for later mechanics when you combine basic mechanics. Uh, but you can also acquired. use the decel control acquired. on its own. So, for example, uh, when you're looping an assault, and we'll get back to looping in the future. Uh, looping is kind of like a newbie mechanic. Uh, it'll work a lot of the times uh, in lower lower tiers. Um, but in the end, you kind of want to get away from looping. There's going to be some times where, you, where you're going to loop, but it's not something you should be doing all the time uh, when you engage a bigger mech as a light. But let's say we're looping an assault and we get to this point here. Okay, there's a point where your loop isn't isn't going to be perfect and you're going to build distance between you and the assault and he's going to be able to see you and get a free shot wherever he wants. Let's say this is like a heavy gauss Fafnir. I'd be screwed if I do a loop like this, right? With decel control, you can turn faster and you can kind of tighten that circle, tighten the circle that you're making. So instead of just like doing a big circle like this, you decel control. Let's get it. There we go. And you can tighten your circle like this. And you can get as close as you want. You can adjust it however you wish. As long as you have fine control over your decel, you can control your, your circle. You can tighten it, right? There you go. And what I'm doing for that, if you've seen the keyboard overlay, I have my middle finger holding down on W uh, because my setting is if I let go of W, I'm gonna automatically decelerate. Uh, so I'm holding down on W and tapping S with the same finger. So my middle finger's on W and I'm tapping S with the same middle finger. Uh, it's possible to do it by just letting go of W. I, I don't find that comfortable personally. I learned it, learned it my way. But if you're comfortable just letting go of W or tapping W, go ahead and do that. That does not work, obviously, if you have the the setting where the your W doesn't automatically decelerate if you let go. So you can do it either way. The point is decel control. Do you find control of your decel? It's going to become important later on. All right. Next mechanic is JJ fluttering. Uh, JJ fluttering is pretty much when you flutter your jump jets while moving. Like this, you just tap your JJ. You tap, tap your jump jets at a rhythm, okay? You don't wanna like spam your jump jets too much because then you'll start lifting off like this and you'll kind of stall. You wanna do it at a rhythm. I like to do it like every half second. I think it's probably faster than half a second, a little bit faster. Um, you can do it every second. And the reason you want a JJ flutter is because you are hard to hit when you're you're fluttering your JJs. Um, the reason that that is is because you're going a little bit up in the air and lots of mechs or all mechs have an animation when they jump jet and Anim have an animation when they go up and they have an animation when they land and some mechs have um wonkier animations than others and it'll make you harder to hit that's two reasons you want to be uh jj fluttering okay when when you're in combat it's one thing to do these mechanics when <clears throat> just by yourself and testing rounds or when you're not fighting it's another thing to do it while you're in combat and jj fluttering is extremely important while you're in combat the reason is it's your primary mechanic when you go on the offensive okay a lot of the uh more advanced mechanics are, are evasive mechanics those movement mechanics are more evasive and when you do evasive mechanics your accuracy will drop it's it's hard to like shoot an opponent while doing evasive mechanics however uh jj fluttering won't oh it doesn't reduce your accuracy in any way because you're you're just you're just tapping jump jets and you're gonna have full control of what you're shooting so i suggest getting used to it because you're gonna be using it all the time you're gonna be using it when you attack you're gonna be using it when you evade get used to it okay it's really important for you veteran players that have stuck around and are getting bored i'll give you a little piece of information that maybe some of you guys did not know when you jj flutter you have the animation, right? However, if you double tap your JJs, you actually proc your animation faster. You proc the uh, landing faster and the entire animation just gets sped up, right? So let's do one jump of the spider. 
one jump i do a little hop and then i drop right if i do two if i double tap the drop happens instantly and it's a more violent movement it happens faster and it's a more violent movement when i'm running i jump at once like this do a little spiders jj's aren't that great but even with uh, the animation sorry it's not that great but even with the standard more standard animation if you double tap it it becomes pretty good I'm double tapping these jj's like this becomes more a lot more violent the movement becomes a little bit more wonky and this will make you harder to hit right rather than single if i do single like this versus double Okay, so that's a little tidbit information for my veteran players that maybe are already familiar with JJ flooding, but that's a little bit extra, extra stuff. All right, <clears throat> next we're gonna go over masking. So we don't have mask on this spider. <clears throat> we're gonna shift over really quick and I'll see you guys when I have a mask mech ready. All right, we are back with the mask in a little thunderbolt um i just wanted to go over mask really quick it's it's another it's just another basic mechanic kind of thing it's another layer to your movement right and there's three things that mask does and that is increasing your top speed same with your reverse speed obviously your reverse top speed it increases your acceleration and it increases your deceleration okay um and and it increases your turn rate okay that's really important that it increases your turn rate and you'll see when you add mask on top of more uh, movement mechanics you're gonna it's gonna pretty much exacerbate your movement mechanics and they're gonna make them faster okay that's that's pretty much what mask does now the reason i chose a thunderbolt is because i wanted to go over the first advanced mechanic which is peaking and, pe uh, and I'm, i refer to side peaking right when you when you peak from like a hill for example um you can peak hills but when you use jj's to peak from a hill it's called pop darting uh you can learn that from a bunch of other people it's a standard mechanic in the game you just use your gym chits go over the hill shoot back away side peaking is a little bit more complicated so we're gonna go over that you can learn pop darting anywhere for side peaking you you can use jj's to side peak okay let's just go side peaking without jj's this is a lot simpler you peak you shoot, you parallel twist, and then you S key at the same time, okay? So peak, shoot, parallel twist, S key at the same time, okay? It's okay if you don't uh, fully parallel twist, you might forget, but it's just faster to parallel twist, remember that. And you wanna have, of course, your legs going outside um, so you can peak, just let go. There you go. And you can also, of course, you can you can have your legs going into the hill when you peak. So you just uh, you back up to peak and then your forward speed uh, acceleration is a bit. You go faster, right? Because you go faster with your your forward movement just because your speed's faster. But I like having my legs on the outside go pointing to where I want to peak because when I have jump jets, you can use your jump jets to peak rather than moving out. And peaks like that, right? And you have these small peaks. I'm, jump jetting then s king and this is with vectoring okay vectoring increases your forward thrust instead of it being like 14 kph you can see mine in the in the bar here is going to 33 right if you don't have vectoring and you have your nodes um on some other some other node you just add w you add some forward throttle to your your jj's and it it ends up being the same mechanic you just have one extra input all right so you can jj peak and then you can kind of use these baits and with mask you can bait you can move faster right you can peek faster you can bait these shots however with mask you're gonna have uh you're gonna have this reticle shake right so if you want to take a shot you don't you don't mask when you're taking the shot mask only when mask forward only when you're baiting and then when you're actually taking a shot just mask backwards do not mask forward you'll miss your shot okay um now we can incorporate the double tap JJ's that we just learned while to, to, to use that as a peak and you can see the Thunderbolts Thunderbolts animation is kind of kind of crazy all right so this is just the one one jump jet look how much slower that is versus two 
a double tap, right? And with a double tap, you get two forward thrusts, right? Because you're tapping your jump jets twice, like this. So you can peek like that. And then with mask, you can actually mask backwards like this. And of course, you can incorporate your twists, right? That. And if you want to take the shot, you can. If, But I recommend using this more of like a bait. And then you can take a longer peek uh, when you actually want to shoot, of course. Because it's kind of impractical to just do like a, a snapshot. Uh, you guys should remind me if I miss something or whatever you can put it in the comments You could tell me on this gray hey, Django you missed this and that or is this possible? And I'll see if I can include it into the video um, Not including the video. I'll make a separate video if I miss something and I'll update it or whatever um, So yeah, let me know we're gonna move on to the next mechanic now All right, we're in the spider now in a faster mech gonna start doing more advanced movement tech and we're gonna get started with bunny hopping or bee hopping and you guys probably have heard this this term used in other games and there's a reason i use that term too because it's it's you know what it is already and it kind of is bunny hopping and it's essentially a combination of counter twisting and jj flattering that's all those two mechanics combine and you can bunny hop like this there we go you can increase the length of your JJs if you don't have that many. And you just want to get used to this. You want to get used to bunny hopping because you're going to add another layer on top of it. Okay. So that's it. That's all it is. Bunny hopping. You use this in... in uh, while you're moving, you can do it sideways. Let's say you're engaging an enemy. You don't want to get, engage them head on, right? Counter twisting keeps your torso forward. So this, they could still CT the shit out of me. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna perform a B hopping sideways. All right, so when I'm engaging the Atlas, I'm gonna B hop like this, because I know he's there. Like I said, this is very fluid. You're gonna be incorporating all these mechanics into one. So for example, if I'm B hopping, I can parallel twist and mix in parallel twisting with my counter twisting, so I can spread damage. Remember, counter twisting does not spread damage very well because you're keeping your torso still. Parallel twisting is to spread damage. Okay, so we can do it sideways to engage the Atlas, right? I'll check once in a while to make sure he's there. And then that's it. All right, you want to do it sideways when you're engaging. Okay, B hopping. It's really important because it's used for the next mechanic, which is directional shifting or de-shifting. And it's the mechanic where it allows you to change directions very quickly. Okay. So directional shifting involves bunny hopping, which is a combination of, as I said earlier, it's a combination of counter twisting and uh, JJ fluttering, but you also will incorporate deceleration control. Bunny hopping. Just pay attention, see if you catch it. And all of a sudden I'm going to the right. Okay. Do it again. Bunny hopping, bunny hopping, bunny hopping. I'm moving left. And that's about, that's what D shifting is, right? It's just, you can D shift 90 degrees and it changes your direction uh, pretty quickly. And this is, um, let's do one directional shift, okay? I'm getting ahead of myself here. One directional shift. You JJ, JJ, like this. Right as you JJ, you wanna D cell control so you want to tap your s key and then you want to press a or d depending on which way you want to directional shift so like this boom my legs are facing that way all of a sudden right oh and you want to counter twist of course so look how my torso stays right torso stays and you guys can see that in the you know, analyze it for yourselves slow down the video if you need to um but i have the overlay so counter twist while doing what I just said, JJing into a tap of the D cell uh, into the direction you want to go in. And then that's pretty much it. You've done a directional shift. It's not that hard. Um, the hard part comes when you want to chain directional shifts together and it requires you to just be a little bit on your toes. And when you uh, do two 90 degree directional shifts uh, right after the other, you can do a sidestep. So. Let's do that. I'm going direct, to directional shift twice. I'm going to turn 90 this way, and then I'm going to turn 90 back. 
and that allows you to do a little sidestep if someone's like trying to peep you you do uh from a distance or goss you you can do a couple sidesteps you know be a little bit erratic so let's do a sidestep two directional shifts one two all right let's do let's do another one let's do another one uh we're gonna do a sidestep two directional shifts one two there we go Move to the left one two two directional shifts and of course you can keep going right you can chain it'll look a bit ridiculous if you keep doing it because then you become kind of obvious and you're not really getting anywhere like it's going to take me like ages to get to the atlas if i'm de-shifting the entire time sidestepping which is two d-shifts but it's really useful and uh you can't really see how far i'm going or the scale of it so what i like to do is practice against the atlas and we'll cross him over here and break his ankles like that um you can if you do the d shift faster of course you'll you'll travel horizontally less of a distance so if i do it uh if i wait a long time i can do a big a big a big horizontal movement like that or you do it really quickly and you do a smaller side step so like this side step okay atlas guy's ankles broke and imagine someone trying to hit you from even like 600 meters with velocity weapons can be pretty difficult uh so it's it's a very powerful evasive mechanic as i stated earlier when i was talking about jj fluttering you can't really shoot stuff while you're while you're de-shifting right so when you're ready to engage and you're actually ready to fight after they've you know wasted their cooldowns you go back to just regular jump jet fluttering one thing that i want to mention about jj fluttering that i forgot to mention by the way I just reminded myself is that this is key I know I said you need to like JJ flutter the entire match, but when you're on a downward slope, you do not want to JJ flutter, okay? And I'll show you why right now. This is what happens. This is what happens if you JJ flutter on a downward slope, okay? You just you just fall off and you float. You don't even have to spam it. I just I just did one one JJ off a downward slope and then I'm floating. Okay, and that's, that makes you an incredibly easy target. When you go uphill, you don't have to worry. You can just spam that shit as much as you want. Downhill though, no JJs, okay? So when you're in a battle um, or in a 1v1 or something, you kind of want to stay. You don't want to be like here and be fighting because then you'll drop, you'll float, you'll get shot. So just be wary of your environment when you're moving um, and do not JJ flutter when you're going downhill, okay? You can be on the side, going on the side like this. No problem. As soon as you start going downwards, though, you do not want to. You want to hold on to those to those JJs, okay? It's the one exception when you're not supposed to JJ flutter. All right, let's go back. Go back to D shifting. Um, that was 90 degree D shifting. You can also do 180 degrees. Of course, this will take uh, a longer time, and you'll need to incorporate uh, multiple JJs, uh, JJ taps when you when you do a 180 D shift. And uh, not that many mechs can do it pretty well. Um, it's going to be a lot slower than 90 degrees, obviously. Uh, so the, the amount of mechs that have the agility to do it well are, are very few. But here, this is this is a 180 shift. I'll just do it right now. There we go. Going the other way. Um, and this is important because sometimes you just need to, you find yourself in a bad position. You peek too much and you kind of just want to go the other way. And I'll show you the difference. So this is we don't need to be in third person this is let's say we're gonna peek that catapult from this hill okay and we we go we go we go we go we go oh shit we overextended let me reverse back okay you see how slow that was i mean to you guys i mean that's probably normal speed let's be real for me this is like absurdly slow especially if you uh, overextend here like imagine having no jj's by the way on a mech and doing that kind of kind of speed even with JJ's, it's incredibly slow. Okay. Dude, we'll, we'll give you the third person like this. Or... You D-shift, right? You do this. Tap jumps a couple times and then you go the other way. Instantly. Not instantly, but a lot faster than if you were to reverse. I always tell people who are practicing you don't want to ever reverse period like to move you want to reverse only when you're decel controlling you don't want to start fighting when you're reversing like this 
you don't want to do that always go forward always w key use s to change your directions okay if you want to go backwards literally just go forwards but backwards you know that's all yeah so when i brought up the reversing and you sh when you shouldn't reverse uh i brought up the word you should never reverse and that's i shouldn't re use that word lightly uh depending on the mech like if you're a bigger mech for example or a brawler and people are pushing you you don't want to turn away obviously and go forward and show your back you're going to be s king to fight back so uh, never was a strong word um it's just that when you're performing the mechanics as a light uh, as a light pilot you shouldn't be fighting a lot when you're in reverse is all so kind of want to clarify that i don't want people thinking that they can never reverse um and fight when they reverse no there's going to be situations where you do do that especially uh happens a lot in bigger mechs or when you're receiving a push and you want to focus on the enemy while you're backing up so just wanted to clarify that as well go backwards you got to go forwards like this all right and you can tell by my spacebar when i'm doing this mechanic i'm tapping jump jets like what two three four times and imagine now when i'm doing this mechanic i'm doing that double tap i'm doing that double tap of the jj's so i'm procking that animation it's the same mechanic you're just you're just doing it for longer right you're holding the decel down for a little longer so you can twist the full 180 degrees and you're tapping jump jets a couple more times like that here we go okay that's a 180 d shift it's a lot faster it'll get you out of trouble for sure so it's also a mechanic you can practice all right so this is actually future django here um we're about done with the video kind of wanted to just wrap things up uh i looked through the previous footage and there's a couple things i just wanted to go over uh some final thoughts um i want to go back to looping because i said i would um and that's about it so let's get started um first thing i'm going to go over is is notes in this conclusion um if you feel like your dishes are a bit slow uh i recommend on a lot of mechs to get anchor turn anchor turn is really useful uh on smaller mechs and on bigger mechs they just help you twist faster and twisting is a mechanic that you'll be using on all, all weight classes not just lights um, so I, I recommend getting anchor turn if you can fit it. Um, the vectoring can also be useful for the peaking. It also helps with your 180 shifts because vectoring uh, works when your speed ends up going to zero. So for, for a lot of mechs that require your speed to eventually drop to zero for the 180 shift, uh, vectoring can help you there. So I recommend getting those two nodes. Anchor turn is important for brawlers. I even recommend getting torso speed uh, if you're a brawler you I, I really recommend getting torso speed with your anchor turn because that affects your both your that that like buffs your parallel twist like two times like it so it's, it's really important so if you can spare the nodes get the nose okay right, enough about that that's what i want to go over really quick next i wanted to touch up on the uh, looping situation um earlier i said that looping you kind of wanted to avoid looping uh during that during that section of the video and that's because with these new tools now you should be able to react to your opponent's movements and switch directions fast enough to simply uh keep at their back so if the atlas is moving to the right if i'm behind him and i'm shooting him he's shifting uh he's moving quite right to try and see me i'll just you should be able to use your mechanics now to simply evade him and move left and you should be able to loop him that way so ideally you should stay at his back at all times and you kind of don't need to rely on looping anymore, okay? So that's kind of wanted to clarify. Uh, I looked at the video again, and I remember talking about how I don't really want you guys to reverse when in combat. Simply turn directions instead, and I did a parallel. Uh, I'm sorry, a 180 shift like that with the spider in the video. Um, I realized that this I'm using parallel uh, twisting here when I'm changing directions, and that's simply because when your mech can't turn 180 so if i were to do it sideways or uh, with the counter twisting it wouldn't really work but if you're turned like this you can i'll just show an example of a 180 shift with uh uh with um counter twisting rather than parallel twisting because i showed it with parallel twisting in the video with the spider so that there you go that's that um as you see i'm in the vulcan i'm using mask because i said your mask speeds up your d shifts and that's true you can see me my um my 180 twister actually just requires one JJ on the on the Vulcan, but if I were not to use mask, it'd be a bit slower. So 
be like that. Vulcan's a bit slow. It's a medium mech, so. And then with the uh, counter just see. It makes it a lot faster with masks, see? Okay. So I think that's pretty much about it. Um, like I said earlier, if there's any more thoughts or questions or concerns, let me know. Uh, and yeah, class is dismissed. I'll uh, see you guys later. Peace.